Hello and welcome to FX Street Currency and Play. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined by Eddie Topic of ADM ISI. How are you today, Eddie? I'm pretty good today. Good, good. Well, lots to get through. We'll start mm -hmm. off with the headlines. Uh, Euro dollar, um, Euro exposed to political risk with Catalan independence ultimatum expiring. And that's had a, a, a bit of down tick on the euro, but I think that story is going to play out. I think people have, have negated that to a great degree. There are so many other things like the ECB coming up and mm -hmm. they're going to be much more interested in that. Understood. Uh, cable sterling falls as UK retail sales yeah. uh, fell to meet expectations and dollar yen. This 113 handle is trading a little bit below that is a tough nap to crack as yeah. uh, T yields drop. And um, we're going to look at a chart on dollar yen in a little bit. But starting off, let's look at euro dollar. And you brought this chart along. Just walk us through this. Where well, are we going? Until today, it looked, ex I mean, when we last spoke about this uh, last week, I said there's a crowned head, head and shoulders top within a larger head and shoulders top. And it's a beautiful head and shoulders mm -hmm. top. You can see it there. The action over September was the small head and shoulders crown. And now we have the larger one, which is between August and where we are now. The only blip is today, we really didn't go that much down. We've, we seem to be almost almost a, a key reversal up mm -hmm. yesterday. It was definitely an outside bullish day. So the targets, the first one is just under 116 on the downside. The next one is in a huge band of uh, support, which is between uh, 115.10 and 114.65. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if we really had the head and shoulders top, then we'd be down to sorry, 112.50. But it's, today it's not really making its mind up. There's a lot of seemingly confusion or just confusion, I think, really. The, the, it's not fully following through, so I'm just a bit cautious over this one mm -hmm. because of the action that actually happened yesterday. Understood. And, and what would the trade be here, or, or just maybe a wait and see, see, see where it goes? I'd say you, you look and see when it breaks the necklines. The, the, the one, obviously, is the, the big neckline, which is now just underneath 117, say 117, uh, 116.51, which is the medium moving average, those two areas between 116.51 and say 116.70, and that area there is where you're going to see um, the support coming through to, su to support this, this head and shoulders top. That's where it'll fail. Mm -hmm. it, it could fail now, but it's, it's unnecessary. If it does fail now, I mean, there's really nothing till just short of 119, say 118.70. And then you're going to talk over 120 easily. There, there really isn't much between in the 119s. It's it's a hundred points of, of free water till we get starting into resistance again. Incredible. Uh, moving on, uh, looking at uh, euro sterling. With all due respect, looks a bit of a, a, a messy chart. Uh, and and is, is that um, that's similar to the, <laughs> similar to the negotiations at the it's, moment? It could be. It's it's a huge messy chart because it's got contradictory things coming through. Mm -hmm. We have on the longer term the upside being pointed through, we've got plenty of support lines, Andrews and shift pitchforks all saying try higher and it's confusion. The shorter term action is bearish. Mm -hmm. But is it bearish? To, uh, the beginning of this week we had a, a, a pipe bottom, a bullish matching action. That should indicate higher markets, but we've really not gone further that much. We're, we're just over 89.5 and, and we've come back down again. Um, we've got good resistance um, with the medium moving average acting as support 89.30. But there's a lot of resistance around our 89.30 upwards and, and 89.60 is the really interesting level at the moment and it's not really pushing up and it's not really pushing down the most recent action at the beginning of this week I would have said there's a few days we're going to see this market push up mm -hmm. and we've had that but it's not been that dramatic so m confusion understood um, maybe wait for that one to play out before uh, before putting trades on there uh, looking at um, cable uh, a clearer, similar, yeah. Slightly clearer. Slightly clearer, but slightly similar. Mm -hmm. um, longer term, still looking positive. There's, there's nothing that says this market shouldn't go up unless you have consecutive closes below 113, or ideally, neutral is below 130.50. But this move up, you, the, unless you get close, consecutive closes below 131, it's still looking bullish. But in the last two weeks, we've developed this slightly bearish tinge to the market. Um, there's a possible key reversal on there. Um, as such, so I'm a bit worried about it um, mm -hmm. as to it might come back down to 131. But if it holds there, then this whole action we've seen over the last two weeks, which could say, oh, we're going to try higher, that's going to turn out to be nothing necessarily. It's actually going to be something that we've just got back, fresh support, fresh mm -hmm. ammunition, try higher. 
Good stuff. And uh, looking at uh, dollar yen as well, we talked about this one thirteen handle. Um, yeah. What's what's going on here? Well, it's a tale of of, of all the, the 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 labels I put on it. Uh, at the beginning of the month, we had uh, a. a a topping action, a bearish dark cloud cover pattern. That's right at the end of September, beginning of, of this month. Then that tipped over a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we had a bearish shooting star pattern, which is a, a spike up yep. and it came straight back down again. Brilliant. Market's going to go down. And it duly went down. Beginning of this week, a pipe bottom. Two markets, you know, same similar range and mm -hmm. then bouncing straight up again. And it's interesting, it bounced up off the long moving average and the number of fibs as well. Great, great sort of action. So we've seen that move higher. Now, this is where the question is. This whole action over September, October, what is this? Mm -hmm. And there's a, a number of opportunities and options here. Is this whole action September, October, a bullish halfway hesitation when you have a move up like that all the way up on the, in September? then you have a, a period of hesitation, and then you have another leg higher. Or, as I put on there, is it another top? Is it another top to the action we've seen in early October? There's a potential key reversal, potentially up, mm -hmm. on the weekly chart. So at the moment, it's moving more towards this being a, a, a bullish halfway hesitation. But we will not know that until 10 o'clock, London time Friday, when they close the market, and we all look at this and go, aha. But again, I say, this is the most technical of all the markets. Mm -hmm. Key reversals, etc., are always suspect in any yen pairing, even the weekly one. So just be cautious about it. But it's a really interesting one because it's running into the Japanese elections, which are happening yes, on Sunday. Indeed. So uh, yeah, look and out that would that. suit them to see a stronger dollar. Understood. And finally, uh, an old favourite, um, or young favourite, if you want to call it that, uh, Bitcoin. Um, fantastic chart. It's great. It's, it's, uh, somebody said, oh, it's so difficult to chart. Of course it's not difficult <laughs> to chart. It's easy enough to do it. It's actually great for that sort of opportunity if you look at it. The most recent action, which was yesterday, it's a bullish doji. Actually, I, call it, I would say, it's, I put it there, possible butterfly doji, but I actually think it is a butterfly doji, which means it opens, drops down, and closes about the same high yes. level as such. That is indicative of a try higher. And you've got to look out for th three specific levels, of maybe four on the, on the top side. Uh, you look at 57.46, which is the first area of resistance that you'll come across. Then the next one at 58.46, which 100 points away isn't that far, but that's actually towards the end, the higher the market. And it's coincident with some of the other resistance areas we've got. Uh, 59.83 is key. Mm -hmm. If we have two consecutive close over that, then the market is going to likely move higher still. Look out and then 62.20 is the one after that. Understood. And uh, briefly, China. Uh, we, we haven't really mentioned that um, mm. in, in the FX Street show currency in play this week. Just talk us through, obviously you've got the Congress meeting, a lot going on, appointments potentially being made as well, or will be mm -hmm. made. How do you think that will impact the market? Personally, I think what happened on the Sunday night Monday, mm -hmm. was, or the, uh, the Tuesday, sorry, was the most important thing. They turned, uh, the, the, the market had been given the information from the central authorities, the Chinese market, we want stability during the address by President Xi. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're getting now. You're having a stable market. That's what they want to see because it's where the whole world is focusing. You turn on at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning uh, in the UK or uh, uh, Bloomberg or CNBC or any other channel, any business channel. Here, you know, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're awake, you'll see it's going to be anything that President Xi says or his, uh, the, 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 the central bank governor or the minister of finance or any of those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And it's an announcement that the new uh, proposals are going to be doing for the next 10 years, five years at least, sorry. So uh, that's key to what's going ahead. And there's a lot of interesting things going through there, I think, especially mm -hmm. I, was, I was more interested to see sort of the, the, the promotion of the green agenda mm -hmm. as opposed to what we saw in America. Yeah, it's positive. Yeah, it's fa um, and I think that was a deliberate sort of snub that way. <laughs> um, the, 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 the freeing up of the currency and interest rates a little bit more, but still being under central control. Um, I mean, a lot of their debt's domestic, so it's, it's to a certain degree, it doesn't necessarily matter. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's an interesting one to watch for how we see the dynamics going ahead. At this particular moment, I think you're going to see stability because nobody's going to do anything. They're just going to wait and see what's going to be said and who 
if anybody as such is going to be going forward as going to be the next leader in 2022, I think it is. That's a, assuming he, that uh, President Xi doesn't uh, step down, but usually they go for about 10 years. Yes, indeed. And finally, uh, looking at the economic calendar, anything jumping out there? I mean, no, not, really. jobless, but not, not, really, not really. Not really. Moving, I it? mean, the governors, uh, the Fed governors will be speaking, other central bankers will be speaking, so we seem to listen to them more than we actually look at the data these days now. The, the, there isn't anything right now that, that, that will come out and smack me in the head, so to speak. Uh, unless we get a Fed appointment by the end of the week. Yes, now that that is, chair, is quite interesting how that's going to go ahead. I, I obviously it's political, so it's outside my remit. But it's um, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction of, of the market is to that. Um, plus, we had a, a high at twenty three thousand in the Dow, which we didn't mention. You know, yeah. we've got a, a, a huge, and it's on the thirtieth anniversary. Oh. A little bit of shakes there, I think. <laughs> well, brilliant. On that note, Eddie, thank you so much for joining us today on FX Street. Thank Come you very much indeed.